And then it was like, blink, blink. Now everything is gone. <sighs> Y'all, it has been a day. Let me just walk you through how my morning went real fast. For starters, our shower has been leaking for weeks now, so there's been contractors at our house all the time trying to figure out what's wrong with it. They finally cut this hole in the wall and figured out that it's a valve. So the plumber was supposed to come today, only when I replied to the email saying he could, that email decided not to send. So is our shower getting fixed today? Who's to say? Then I opened up my SSD card and it blinked and then just disappeared or rather everything inside of it disappeared. So, you know, I nearly had a heart attack there because that is about three months worth of footage and photos and patterns and projects. And I don't have backups because the more backups you want, the more money you have to spend. So I did some aggressive coloring while waiting for Matt to magically fix my problems. Unfortunately, Matt is not a wizard and soon I heard the dreaded, oh no. The oh no was because my computer decided to randomly shut off. Now I could only assume that I had lost not only my drive, but everything on my computer as well. But then we found out it wasn't my computer, it was the power, which for some reason has decided to completely die on this entire wall, both sides. While Matt went out to trip the breakers, I tried plugging in other random things, like my lights over here. They worked. Then five seconds later, they didn't. Who knows what the crap that was, because we wiggled around the cord and oh my goodness, now they're working again. The same cannot be said of the power over here, so all of my computer stuff has now been moved to a plug that does work. So if you're keeping track, we have lights working. Power in this wall, not working. Computer working, just in a totally new location. And the most important thing of all, SSD not working. Did I lose three months of work? Who's to say? So yeah, that happened. All of that happened. Most recent update though, the plumber did show up and fixed the shower, supposedly. Uh, we still have a giant hole in our wall, so. It's not the end of the contractors yet. Anyway, all that to say, I had a whole project that I was going to start today. And after all of this happened, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm just gonna work on little stuff today. However, I am me and um, I have no chill. So after a slight bit of stitching, I found myself suddenly very desperately wanting to revisit a very old project idea, an embroidery project. I should not be starting another embroidery project, but here we are. And it's fine. It's totally fine. Oh, why am I doing these things? I don't know. This is something I've been wanting to stitch for a very long time. I got the idea years ago to the point where I had printed off the picture. I had sort of given a general plan to it. I had picked out colors. And after like two years of being stored in a Ziploc bag and carried around with me, I was like, you know what? That's not gonna happen. And I put it all away. And I'm here to tell you today, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so this is a gorgeous scene from Disney's Fantasia, the original one. It is from the Pastoral Symphony, which I believe is by Beethoven. Music history classes, do not fail me now. And there's just something about this image that I love. The color scheme, the gentleness of it, the depth of it. I don't know, I love it. And back then I was thinking of stitching it like, this big because I still did small embroideries back then. I do not do small embroideries anymore. Not really. I think in the end, I gave up on this one because it kind of intimidated me. At first glance, it looks very color blocked, which very much fits in my style. But when you look closer at it, you can see that there's not really any hard edges. Everything is blurring into each other a little bit. There's a lot of color variation or at least more than stands out at first glance. So it does kind of lend itself to the idea of like thread painting, which is not something I do. It's not really something I even want to try to do because I think it's a good idea to recognize your limitations. But back then I didn't have nearly as much experience as I have now. I didn't know how to use Photoshop to create my own patterns based on drawings the way that I do now. So it feels time to give this another go and do it in my own style. I wanna do it 
color blocked. So the first thing that I did was sit down to create a pattern out of this picture. I do that by trying to find the clearest version of the image that I can. Sometimes I'll screenshot things, but uh, we let our Disney Plus membership lapse and I couldn't find a very clear version of this one on YouTube. So I went off of a still image that I found on Google. I put that in Photoshop and then I create a layer on top of it and I basically just trace all of the lines. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I was doing it quite sloppily here because I don't care that much. I don't think it needs to be super precise. As I said before, the lines between the different colors are very blurry. They're not sharp lines. They kind of wave in and out. So I went with a very sort of simple, general version of the original image. It didn't take too long because I was being so sloppy with it, but I do think it looks good for what I wanna do. I of course wanted to do it big, but I didn't wanna get like massively huge. My size was kind of dictated by the bar stretchers I already had because I'm not buying anything for this. I'm hoping that I won't even have to buy any embroidery floss. I want to use what I already have. So I only had eight inch, 10 inch and 24 inch bar stretchers. So we are going with a 24 inch by 24 inch frame. That should fit what I just printed out here pretty well with a nice amount of space on the sides. You don't want to put an embroidery too close to the edge on bar stretchers because you know, you have all of that thickness that you can't stitch through. Now that I have my pattern made, the size chosen, and the pieces printed out, I'm gonna trim these all down and fit them together and tape them together so that I have one full sheet and I can see exactly what the size is. A delicate process because I did not in any way properly line these up when I printed them. I like to not make things easy for myself. Good times. First, I trim down the unprinted edges of the paper, then I match up the overlapping designs and tape two sides of the puzzle together. Repeat on the other side, then make the two halves one whole. Inevitably, I'm slightly off somehow, so I just kind of mash things around and retape until I have a finished puzzle. Now I can see how much fabric I'll need this piece will be perfect. And cut a piece of interfacing to size as well. I've started using interfacing on the back of any embroidery piece I expect to be working on for a while. Even if the fabric is non-stretch and fairly sturdy, it just helps ensure the design will stay straight and clean as long as possible. Iron-on interfacing though, not sticky backed. Sticky is the worst. So that has to get ironed on. Now we can build the frame, which will never stop being physically awkward for me. I get my bar stretchers at Blick, although you can also find them online at places like Amazon. I just like that Blick has like every size inch by inch, each sold separately, so I can buy exactly what I want instead of being stuck with like a pre-chosen set of four, which is what I typically see on Amazon. Tis now the loud part of the process, which isn't my favorite, but it must be done. I start with three staples on each side just to make sure it's evenly stretched, but obviously that's not taut enough for good embroidery, so then I go back and add, to be precise, a whole buttload more. This is the third staple gun I've gone through doing this canvas framing, and let me tell you, having a big ol' sturdy one makes a huge difference. Don't cheap out on your staple gun. After cutting off any excess chunks of fabric, I'm going to flip over the edges and use a quick running stitch to secure them. This is only necessary because this fabric frays like crazy, and if I'm working on this for like a year, that's not gonna end well. Last bit of loudness, getting those corners folded and stapled just like a bed sheet. Wait, you don't staple your sheet corners down? Strange. And look at that, tis like a drum, y'all. That's how you want it. 
All right, our canvas is done. Our pattern is done. We need the pattern to be on the canvas. But this is, you know, raised and unsupported. As tight as it is, we don't really want to be pressing on this fabric with a pin as we're tracing everything on. I keep saying we, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who does this. It's a very convoluted way to go about it, but it's what works for me. Uh, pausing really fast because somebody solved this mystery for me. How is it that the door frame is perfectly vertical, the top of the shelf is perfectly horizontal, and yet the table looks like it's on a massive slant? How can all three of these be true at the same time? Is this an optical illusion? Am I going crazy? So first thing I'm gonna do is tape the pattern to the back of the fabric, centered and everything how I want it. I prefer to use masking tape for this because it comes off the fabric easily, so... I'm gonna go get some. Go into the tool cabinet. Oh, it's a mess. Okay. All right. Does it look right? Centering is one of those things that like, I know there's a better way to do this, but it feels like it involves math. So I kind of prefer to just keep guessing for the rest of my days. Yeah, that seems right-ish. That is not bad at all. So now I find a book that is about the height of my frame and I stick that underneath. Preferably the biggest book possible, but also one that I don't mind marking on top of. I don't want to dent the covers of any of my favorites. Book, book, book. Okay, yearbook. Don't care about that at all. I can't believe our college was proud of being known as a bubble. That's not a good thing, you know. Go to college here, learn nothing about the real world. Is that really what you want to advertise? Get in there, not you. Oh, perfection. I can see through this fabric pretty clearly, so I don't think I actually need the light board to trace, but it is giving a nice white background, which is good because I don't have a plug close enough to plug that in. Let's do it. Marry the man today. Ow. Standing on my pinky toes. And rather than move to a place where I could just plug in my light box, I printed off a smaller version of the pattern to follow. Until even that was getting to be way too difficult. <sighs> So I finally moved to the floor and oh my goodness, look at that, I can see the pattern. You can tell I'm getting super tired of tracing when my head is like six inches away from the fabric. I feel like I look so small behind this giant canvas. So the next step is choosing the colors, which I think a lot of people do as they go, especially on smaller pieces. But on a big piece like this, I like to have my palette completely set before I start. I am realizing now how big this piece is. So like that's gonna take a lot of thread. So my whole plan of not having to go buy thread for this might be going out the window. I am very picky in my color selection when it comes to like the Beauty and the Beast pieces. I will literally spend hours pouring over the clearest image that I can find and trying to make sure that I have matched up those colors as closely as possible. I don't think I need to be quite as picky here because just like when I was making the pattern and tracing the pattern, I'm taking some artistic liberties. Sometimes I mark my colors directly onto the fabric. I don't really wanna do that because there are some small sections on there and I feel like it'll just get really busy and hard to read. So instead, I'm going to mark my colors on this lovely printed out pattern. So then I can just easily consult this as I go. And it is now trash truck time. Hello, sir. I also don't like to print the colored image out because that just seems like a massive waste of ink. So I usually just bring it up on my laptop or even my phone when I'm feeling lazy and just go off of that. So now we just stare, select, write it down and hope that I have the right colors. It seems unlikely.
When I say I'm picky about color selection, y'all, these are not easy colors to match. It's a slow process for me. This exceptionally exciting content went on for another couple hours. Yep, hours. My eyes hurt. I definitely have to go buy more. First of all, because I'm missing sort of a whole realm of like purpley blue tones and then orchid purple tones, which there are several of. On top of that, there's a lot of colors that are going on big sections and I only have like one skein of them, so. <laughs> A trip to Joanne is in order. Before I do that though, I do want to nail down two, three of the final choices for how I'm gonna do this piece because it will affect how much thread I need. The first I've already nailed down, it's the stitch type. I'm doing this entire thing in split stitch. No satin stitch this time around. But then there's two other choices, thread weight and stitch direction. The directional thing is interesting because on my satin stitch pieces, the Beauty and the Beast ones, I'm always stressing how using different angles is so important. You want to use the angle that is best for the specific section you're sewing, and you also want the differing angles of the stitch to catch the light. For split stitch, on the other hand, I'm kind of thinking this piece would look cool if I literally sewed the whole thing in the same direction, in a vertical split stitch. When I imagine like different angles of split stitch hitting up against each other on the edges, especially because there's no black outlines on this piece like there would be on my satin stitch pieces, it just doesn't seem like it would look that good. So I'm pretty heavily leaning towards all the same direction. The thread weight. I don't feel a need to finish this piece quickly, but I am seeing an appeal of using six strands, which is not something I frequently do. How is it, again, trash truck time? There's three different trash trucks, but I think you hear them like six times because they go down one side of the street and then turn and come up the other. So it just seems like constant trash trucks for half a day. So anyway, this is what I want to test. I want to test some six strand split stitch all going in a vertical direction with a color change. All right, so I have a little bit of fabric that I cut off here. I need to still stick this in a hoop, otherwise it's gonna drive me nuts. Let me go see if I have a tiny hoop I can use. And then we will test out some stitches. I actually didn't end up testing for long because the options I was gunning for turned out to be just how I wanted them. So that's it. Test piece is done. Now I just have to go to Joanne and get so many more threads. This is already such a pile of floss and I'm gonna get so much more because yeah, the six strands of floss, you go through it fast. You know, you'd think that I would have learned my lesson about preparing thoroughly before going floss shopping. It has been years after all. Apparently I haven't learned that lesson, not at all. I just go with scribbled notes. I need more grayish yellows, rich purples, 745-ish, 3350, but one shade lighter. So, there we have the spoils of my Trip. This pile is bigger than that one, slightly concerning. So now I revisit the color choosing stage for the second time and spend potentially another hour choosing colors. <laughs> yeah. Same day, I just changed. Do you ever come to the realization that you are 100% just like shooting yourself in the foot? I have been struggling so hard to focus today and then I was like, hey, Maybe that's because your hair is half down, you're wearing long sleeves, and your sweater is itchy. So like, I don't know, maybe just fix those things. I feel so much better right now than I did five minutes ago. Twould be best 
if I organized my crap a little. Two thousand years later. We've got the originals laid out. A few moments later. So it basically narrows down into shades of yellow, shades of pinky orchid, and then shades of like navy blue to indigo. One eternity later. Is there anything more satisfying to a color-loving soul than just a Frickin' huge selection of embroidery floss. This is quite a color palette. 62 colors total. And I used all except this. These were the only colors I had left that I bought unnecessarily. So this is basically it. This is the end of my prep process. Everything is done except all of the other projects I was supposed to finish before starting this one. So the next step is really just setting this aside until it is time for it to be stitched. Because I spent all this time prepping it and I very much would like to give it a little bit of attention, I'm going to stitch something on it. Just one little thing to get an idea of what it's gonna look like, to get a feel for it, to get excited about it. So let's go do that. All right, let's just move this guy out of the way. I'll be back for you. And welcome to the stitching corner, Fantasia. Dun, dun, dun. I really want to stick some bright ass color on here. Oh, it's so pretty. And while I sew this, I thought I'd give you a quick little update on all of the things that were annoying me yesterday. Don't have too much of an update because a lot of it is still in limbo. The shower is no longer leaking, but there's still giant holes in the wall. We're still lacking power in two walls, which equals pretty much the entire master bedroom and about half of my studio. That's a mystery. And I have still potentially lost a lot of work. What I did find out, or rather remember, is that probably about two thirds of the media, the content, whatever it is, that is on that SSD card is also on another hard drive because that hard drive broke about a month ago, which is why I got the SSD card and transferred everything on there. But I did not wipe it off of the hard drive. And while it is broken and I don't want to utilize it, we're pretty sure we can still get everything off of it again to yet another hard drive. <sighs> so that did make me feel a lot better. That being said, I think I stopped using that one like a month ago. So there is still a significant amount of work that will be gone if we can't recover the SSD card. And the thing is, I kind of have a policy of like, easy come, easy go. I don't like to cling too tightly to anything. Everything that I did lose or potentially will lose, the videos have already been uploaded to YouTube. My favorite photos have all been transferred to my phone. Like, thankfully, I'm pretty organized about stuff like that. So they're not a total loss. Yeah, I just, I'm trying not to let it bother me too much. As ye old Maxim says, no use crying over spilt milk. I bit the bullet and bought myself a big old backup hard drive. So huzzah, I'm finally gonna have a backup of everything. I do love that as I was finally buying myself this backup drive. Matt was like, well, you know, you should really have two backups. And I was like, um, my love, let's just celebrate together that I am finally going to have one backup. And I'm done with my first piece of floss. That went by very fast and I am quite enjoying using all six strands. Thanks for joining me for this very spur of the moment project. If you want to see the progress on this piece whenever I do finally start sewing it for realsies, I do post all of that on Instagram. A lot of times I'll just show little progress shots in my stories and then anytime I get to sort of a bigger progression. I'll post photos of it. So do feel free to follow me over there if you want to see this thing get stitched. If you're looking to start making some giant embroideries of your own, then I hope that this gave you some information that will be helpful. Feel free to ask me any questions about my process, my prep, anything in the comments. There's definitely so many different ways to do things when it comes to embroidery, but I am here to help and I will give you any bit of tips and tricks that I can come up with. It's been real, it's been fun, except for the parts where it wasn't. And let's magically put in a final image of this flower fully stitched, which is probably gonna take me a couple more hours to do. Flower! Ooh.
Huon, so far away. Heegabooga! Yep, this is happening. This is how lazy I am. Don't judge me. <sighs> now it's too zoomed in. <laughs> ah!